Jeff, welcome to the show, man. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on board, brother. Thank you very much for doing this. I appreciate it a lot, man. No problem. Thank you for well inviting. It's uh, it's it's always incredible to be able to speak to to, to kind of you know international level strong men and strong women of your stature. Uh, obviously, been in the game for a little while, have some incredible track records under your belt, and just coming off of another insane performance over in Bahrain, man. So first things first, I want to kind of go through your thoughts, your experiences over in Strength Island, obviously coming away with a, with a, with a podium finish, which is absolutely fantastic to see. Definitely, definitely well-deserved. You know, you put in an incredible effort on the day. It was awesome to watch. We, we were here in England on the sofa with our, with our snacks, watching eagerly, man, and you put on an absolute spectacle. So take me through how you found it, what it was like, really getting back in uh, in the driver's seat of competing again and being around all of those guys and kind of your experiences with some of the other athletes because we know that maybe not everyone had quite as good a run as you did uh, on, on the first big show back. So, uh, so take us through that. Oh, for me, it was really good. Uh, it was the first contest of the year, you know, and it was a really good experience. And I think all athletes also were very happy and lucky to, to, to just have the chance to compete one more time. You know, the event in Bahrain was well delayed by two weeks and I think everybody was nervous about if it happened or not. We, we are just happy to compete, you know. All of, all of the athletes are professional and want to compete. That's it. And in the last year, you know, with the pandemic, it was very hard to, to compete many times. Just three contests, uh, you know, we got in November, Wall Strongest Man, Shot Classic. Now Bahrain was the, the third one we do uh, we did in the pand pandemic situation. But uh, at the end, everybody was happy. It was really good organization. It was also the first time they, they put a live show on the ESPN in the American TV. And I hope it will, it will be not the last one. I think Las Vegas was this year will be the, the same. We have to start somewhere and improve for, for the future, but it, it's a little bit different. I see many athletes like uh, in panic because the uh, the show run really really fast. But you know, for me, we we run the show in Canada in that it, in that situation because we compete uh, in front of a crowd and uh, sometimes we do five, six, seven in one afternoon and the show go really really fast. And for me, it's normal situation. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that took a lot of people by surprise because a lot of people don't understand like when you go to a Giants live show or an international show, you know, it goes on for many, many hours and you get a really decent amount of time to cool down afterwards, get some food on board, get concentrated, get focused for the next event before you even get into the warm ups. So from from your side of things, how much time did you get? Uh, to warm up on implements in between rounds because that's the thing when you cut all of that time out then for you guys yeah like it's crazy it's going back to grassroots strongman isn't it where it's like hey you've got these five kilo dumbbells and uh you can warm up your first event is 120 kilo log for reps and you're like okay we're gonna go from 10 kilos to 120 this is strong man <laughs> no, it is it is different but uh, you know in the type of, uh, of competition you have a momentum. Then you start the contest and you never stop until the end. For me, I prefer that. You know, a show like War Strongest Man, example, is just catch for TV. Yeah? It's very, very long between the events all the time. A lot of waiting. Then you have to crank you up when you go, but sometimes you wait four hours before, and sometimes you're ready one hour before, and the TV says, oh, we are not ready. Then another 30 minutes, then another 10. And number five, you know, it's it's all the time waiting. Then I prefer a momentum in a really short contest. And you also see which athlete are in the best shape because you need to recover very fast. And it's not the case with all the athletes. Uh, but for me, it's always an advantage. Yeah, yeah. And again, man, just carrying on from uh, from the last World's Strongest Man, you know, I think that was... That was when everyone kind of went, oh, shit. Like, JF is in incredible shape, man. Like, you came in uh, looking so mean, 
so mean and you put in such a good run it was like wow damn like we're actually seeing a super fit and super strong jf like that whole package it's 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 scary man and it's really nice to see that you've actually been able to continue that into this competition and again it was like it was it was nice because if for all those people that are like oh was that just uh was that just a one-off for jf are we gonna see him out of the top three again that was like oh no, he's, he's continued on and he's looking even better than he did before. So kind of take me through for you. What, what do you feel like has been kind of the biggest thing for you for being able to keep up the fitness? Because I think you can talk about this more than anyone, but the shows as well these days, we're starting to see a little bit more of that heavy strength endurance side of things. Whereas we have some of the competitions where we know <laughs> people have deemed it as CrossFit-esque, which we know isn't quite true, but it's that high, whole high repetition, very, very endurance based. And then we also have these competitions where it's ridiculous static load. But now we're starting to see the, the they're starting to keep those heavy loads, but bring in this like really heavy high endurance stuff, which is man, so taxing on the body. So how have you kind of got around that? Yeah, but first thing, what uh, what's the difference from the last year, World Strongest Man? It's because I have a lot of time to train, because we don't have contests. Normally, I compete minimum 20 times a year. Then last year, I did Arnold Classic, World Strongest Man, and Short Classic. Three contests, but three major contests. But it was a big, big difference. I have a lot of time to improve my power until during the whole months. And I, I was in the best shape of my life after that because I not compete during, I think, eight months. Eight months is just eat, train, and sleep all the time. And you can recover from a little injury sometimes. And it was a big difference for a few athletes too. You can, I, I think also Jerry Pritchett can say he was in the best shape of, of his life because he have eight months to prepare too. Because Jerry worked full time, they compete a lot. And sometimes you have s s some injuries or you're not 100%, you know. Yeah. And it's, at the end, it's the big difference. But for me, because I will turn uh, in June 39 years old, <laughs> I work more on the endurance, the fitness, you know. I do a lot of work about that because I know I'm slower than I, I was in the past. It's normal. It's the age, you know. Yeah. But what I can do, to be more powerful and better in contests. Because the, the goal, okay, a lot of people talk about world record. But for me, the main goal is win the contest, the old show. And it's a big difference when a one-trick pony guy and a complete athlete. But where the prize money is, is for the old show all the time. Then it's why I train every event and I try to be more complete but uh, my fitness is better now at 38 than maybe 26, 27 years old. I was in the past, you know, because I worked harder on that point. Okay, my uh, endurance is maybe a little bit less. I don't know why. I, I need more time to recover from the training. But, you know, it, it's the life. <laughs> it's the life. It, yeah. It's make like this. But... Uh, if you work really hard over the years and you're not really seriously injured, it's just normal you improve over the years. It's very surprising for many people, but for me, it's just normal situation, I think. Yeah, I think it's really important to kind of touch on that, that point of realistically, if you can bring your focus to staying injury free, regardless of whatever happens, you're probably going to make some form of just like linear progression over the years, you know, just, just getting time underneath the bar. Um, now, obviously for you guys, that's tricky because it's not like you get, we're, we're doing, you know, German volume training on like 50% of our one rep max, you know, we're, we're testing big weights on a yeah. regular basis. So um, are you kind of, do you one program everything yourself do you do it instinctually as you're going along? Do you have help with your programming? And how do you kind of like to structure it to, to kind of help with that injury management or fatigue management, risk management factor thing that you've got going on? Yeah. There? For, for the programming, I always do it by myself. I think the best advice I can say to the other athletes, you have to uh, listen your body, how you feel. Then if you have to push more, 
on if you're too tired, maybe a little bit less training and take the time to recover and come back for a real training, you know. Uh, for me, I train uh, legs two times a week. It's a big part uh, of the training. I train the even once a week and two over rep training. Uh, it's almost over an hour a day about stretching. And I have two to three treatment each week also wow. to to try. I, I try to to stay clear from injury, and I think a lot of people don't do that part correctly, you know. And I don't do also in the past. You understand? And You're I learning. Started, yeah, but now uh, I don't have the choice. If you want to keep this level of competition, uh, you have to do that. And uh, sometimes, you know, before Bahrain, I was not in the best shape. I was a little bit injured in my right arm because I trained too much dumbbell, you know. And uh, three weeks before the contest, I hit my sear dumbbell of uh, 125 kilo. And it because I was in really good shape on that event and I want to improve. But I think I do too much and I start to have pain. Then I don't train dumbbell three weeks before Bahrain because I, I was too much pain and I can lift. And finally, I, I did that. I came, I came in third place at that yeah. event. In the competition, my goal was uh, to get seven reps because three guys did six. And I know Novikov will win the event easy. Then just always a good positioning in each event is very important. Then just, I think the time to rest and recover and at the competition, my arm was okay. Yeah, and but I think, I think that's beautiful that, that you kind of touched on that there, that going into the competition, like you're, you're already planning your rep ranges for wh whatever the predicted seedings is. And that, that is, uh, you know, that is a mark of a top class strongman because anyone that understands strongman knows that, you, you, you don't have to be trying to win every single event. Yes, it helps. But if you can place in that top five, you know, especially if there's lots of events, if you've got something like World's Strongest Man, you're always going to be super, super high in the seedings because, of course, it all drops and changes. So, so going in there with that tactic, it, you know, it's, it's absolute genius. Um, but I kind of, I, I want to touch on there, you know, when, when you're going through that and you're kind of, you're getting that elbow pain, you're just leaving off of that. Are you doing anything else like restoratively to, to the elbow to, to kind of get that back in shape or are you just giving it time and then having those treatments that, that you're getting? Yeah, I might get a lot of treatments, but no training, no dumbbell training. I just think you have to have confidence. Uh, you have to know about yourself. Okay, I train dumbbells since 15 years now. It's so, so technique is okay. Yeah. Then now you have to get the, the injury ill. Then I just stop to train. But sometimes, you know, psychologically, you want to train and try before the contest. But you have to, now I have a lot of experience. It's just, okay, calm down. <laughs> you will push in Bahrain. It, it, will, it will be okay. And anyway, I was very confident about uh, to reach the podium in that contest because we have 15 athletes lined up. For me, it's easier. You know, because each athlete sometimes have a weaknesses. And on 10 athletes, it's not so bad. But on 15, if you came last place, it's finished. Because you have just five events to, to, to reach the point. Then when I see Rono get a mistake on arm over arm, I know his contest is finished for him. Same thing with Tom Stockman when he did a zero on the dumbbell. Then it's not possible for him now to fight for the podium. You just have to be top five. Each event, you want the podium. It's why I was finished in high position because he's a really consistent athlete. Yeah. He never finished very far. Then when you have an athlete like this, he's always dangerous in each contest, you know. Because if the, if the guy had no weaknesses, is very hard to beat. And you are, always have a chance for the podium, at least maybe for the win too. Then uh, for the next World Strongest Men's coming, uh, now I'll take a break, a little bit, uh, maybe four weeks, just a little training. And I will restart at the middle of April to push hard 
and uh, I hope I think I have chance for the, the win also this year. We still don't have the events in final, but uh, I think many guys have the chance to win. It will be very close battle because everybody is much better. You know, the young guy like Novikov, Tom, push all the time. Then for the old guys, for me, I need to work really hard, you know, because if I stay at the same level, it's like I drop. You know? Yeah. I need to improve if I want to, to make the podium at least uh, one more time. Then I have to, to push uh, re really hard, but the young guns are incredible, you know. Uh, I watch the, the, this level of contest, uh, they impress me a lot with the performance of the guys I have last year, like Novikov is 24, I think Tom is just 25, we have uh, Luke Richardson also, I think 24 years old. They are very, very strong and very experienced. You know, they, they compete since a long time already and they are young then uh, they are very dangerous i think also uh, many surprises again this year yeah. you know the like the the normal lineup athlete in final can be changed yeah, yeah. A lot it doesn't again. exist anymore it's not like the previous no. world strongest man where you're like okay we can probably guess the top 3 or top 4 and get it like right 90% of the time Whereas now I think you're right, and I think it's it's made it even more exciting because it's now it's like it is anyone's game, and like you said, yes. when you've got the, you the you have absolutely no idea who will be in final first. Yeah. Then before predict a top three, better to wait after the qualification uh, yeah. and relook yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, because some of those qualifications can can get really hairy, and and people can come out of those groups that you're like, oh. I, uh, I I didn't see that happening again. And of course, you know, when they bring in that whole, you know, uh, like the, the stone lift to the death, it's like, okay, like you really, really, really don't want to be caught up in that position now because even even if you come out of that and, you, and you've won, what does it cost you? Do you know what I mean? Like that whole, that whole mechanic, because now it puts so much more pressure into the group stages for people to get a higher seeding. So it's not a case of the people like, okay, I'm just going to just do what I think is the bare minimum to get through now because everyone's so tight. It's one or two reps and everything. Oh, yeah. Everyone's like, right, I've got to give it. I've got to give it a really good shot to get out of the groups and even stand a chance of getting into the finals. So I think that is just, again, it's another, it's an, another yeah. issue. That you the result is much closer. If you, if you compare with the War Strongest Men like 10, 15 years ago, in that time, they invite 30 guys, you remember, in qualification. But in that 30 guys, you have maybe at least 10, 12 guys who have enough stronger to make something in final. And at least in the final, you have big difference of level. Yeah. About this athlete. Now, they invite 25 guys. In my opinion, in that 25 guys, 20 guys can make the top 10. And in that top 10, the level is very, very close. Oh, yeah. It's a big difference. And why it happened is because everybody is much stronger. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's like you said, the, the young guys coming through, it's a case of that they are young and dangerous. And like you said, they have the experience. The fact that you see guys like Novikov, you know, when you see the live streams and he's just parading up and down, checking over all of the implements, putting everything exactly where he needs to be, going through in his head what sequence he needs to be in to optimize his roots and stuff. And you're like, that's, that's, those are the tactics from, like the, from the guys that have been in the game for years and years and years and years. Yeah. So I think but it's you know, amazing that it's forcing all of you guys at the top end to, again, just having to keep on leveling up to even be able to, to, to stay in that position that you want to be. No one yeah, can well, take a step back now because you're just going to fall to the back of the pack. And I think we see that with the injuries that crop up during the season. So the fact that we're getting some good time now where we're getting rest and recovery for spectators, man, it's incredible because every competition is like, wow, everyone's fresh. Yeah. It could and be anyone. know what will happen because I remember in the past, it was fun too to watch the contest, but if Savikas was there, you were almost sure Savikas would win. Yeah. Or uh, Marius in the world's strongest man also, you know. But yeah. now nobody have any idea. Okay, you can think with that set of even, 
maybe this guy have an advantage, maybe this one, but you never know what will happen in the World Strongest Man final. And uh, I think it's much more interesting for the fans, at least for the people who watch it and don't know nothing about strongman. Yeah. You watch the ranking and everybody's mixing all the time. Then it's very, very nice to watch until the end. Nobody win before the last event last year. Yeah. Uh, I think before the Stones, four guys have the chance to win at least. Then you are four. Then you have to fight also for podium. It was really close, you know. If uh, Jerry put the last stone, he beat me. I think he will take second place, downing Tom in third and me four. You know, it's just yeah. small, small uh, difference can change, but it's uh, it maybe most stressful for the athlete, but a lot more interesting for, for the fans. And I think it's why also in the other contests, like the Shot Classic and in Bahrain, you have many viewers on the web watching the competition and this number increase all the time. The sport is more... Uh, not prestigious, but popular, maybe, because you have a, a better level of athletes. Yeah, and kind of, I think it's a great point to kind of hop off and talk about the live streams there, because I think, you know, if COVID hadn't been around, you know, it's kind of been a blessing in disguise for, for that, and especially Strongman, I think, actually having this time where, you know, we've had the incredible feats of strength series, which obviously you featured on, uh, several times now with like the 400 kilo deadlift for reps, which is just absolutely incredible to watch, man. Insane, insane, insane. But I think that's kind of, that's really laid the foundations, really laid the foundations. And I think now we're kind of, we really are starting to kind of get the strongman roots out there and more and more people are getting interested in it and they're seeing these freaks of nature doing these incredible things, man. And it's, it's a spectacle you can't ignore once you've seen it once. It's kind of like, oh, like, I, I want to learn more about this. I want to see more of this sort of stuff. And I don't even think we're really kind of scratching the surface yet with the kind of potential that this has to grow to. And, you know, I've, I've spoken with, uh, with big Lars Lauren Charlet, of course, about, like, what the, the possibilities are for the future, whether we see, like, uh, international seedings for, for strong man with various different events that are, you know, all coexist in, in the same foundation. You know, the, the possibilities are endless. It's so, so, so exciting to see. And again, really young guys coming into the sport now and staying for, for a long time. I don't think we're seeing now quite as much of that. You know, you see the speciality lifters come in that have that freak monster lift. They're in the scene for like two years. Then they eventually end up injuring some muscle that they need to do their speciality lift. And then it, <laughs> they just disappear off the face of the earth. And you're like, where, where is that guy? And it's like, oh, he's like working at Home Depot now or something. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's, uh, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's also, you know, with the, the more, the sport is more popular, but it's also interesting for the athletes. You know, uh, I compete since 17 years now. And I compete for less 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 money than we do now it's all man it's also just it just give the chance to at least to do strongman full-time it's also a big difference you know in the past everybody have a side job and you do strongman like a hobby yeah then it's why also the guys with more money in the sport can concentrate 100 percent of effort about training and they improve the, the result in, in competition. It, it's why the people want to see. They want to see people breaking record and lift something. It's impossible for them to lift. It, it, it's why the strongman is so popular. It's very popular here in Quebec too. We do little demonstration in summer here and a lot of people come to, to watch. Why do they want to watch this? Because for normal people, it's impossible to lift that that type of, of thing you know you want to see something impossible to do yeah yeah it's it, it, it's so so jaw-dropping you know when and i think you know when especially people get to see the things like the atlas stones and whatever and they can think in their head wow like that's just one big giant rock that must be so heavy and you know you see you guys just manhandling them i think that's why 
the Atlas Stone kind of gets put in everyone's minds. Like it's always the one thing they always reference when they talk about what's strongest man. Like, oh, remember the Atlas Stone? Remember this? Remember that? It's like, yeah, because for people, it's just so crazy to comprehend. Like you don't necessarily see it quite as much with like a giant dumbbell. You don't know how much it's loaded in there. But these, like a 200 kilo stone, just the size, the girth, the diameter, you can just tell that that thing, anyone else would approach it, it'd be glued to the floor. <laughs> That's no way. Now. They probably sure. wouldn't even be able to roll it over, let alone actually lap it. You know what I mean? It's mad. It's absolutely mad. But I want to kind of get onto that because, yes, now we're, we're seeing the fact that people can actually go full time with Strongman, which I think it is an incredible opportunity. It really, really is. And something that definitely wasn't on the cards. Even if you kind of look back seven, eight years ago, the, the, the chance of you be, being full-time in Strongman is very hard and making a decent living out of it. Whereas now we're seeing, you know, I think I've heard you talk about it before, like the Champions League back in 2016, it's like you come away with two, two, two grand as a winner compared to what's today is like 75K. You're like, that in itself is just... You know, I win two times strongest Viking in Norway. It was always the, the first Champions League of the year. I won in 2000, uh, I think 16 and 17 or 17 and 18, uh, I'm not sure. But it was $2,000, the prize money of that, you know. But in that time, it, it, the sport was like that, you know, just Arnold and World Strongest Men have bigger prize money. And in the regular uh, circuit uh, competition, it was a uh, small amount of money. But now we are really lucky and I really appreciate that. It's why I don't want to quit the sport also. Uh, when to to have a chance to reach a podium, you know, and uh, you win so uh, small prize money in the past, it's interesting to have a chance to uh, to to win more. But uh, in the future, I think the guy can be like real professional strongman for for the top ten example, because at the moment, maybe okay, make the top ten is a good thing, but it's not enough, you know. For live a brass man, you need to be in top five. It's a small amount uh, of guy can do that. You know, until 2013, I was, I was a full-time job. I have a parcel job too, and strongman. Then I don't have the choice in, in that time, but now it's a total different uh, situation. And I think the best athletes make good money now and can concentrate the effort on the training. And it's also why the people ask me something. How is possible to see all the time bigger weight and bigger weight? It's because now the guys just do that. Yeah. You know, full time. That's it. They don't have a lot of stress. Everybody is specialized in some kind of event. Uh, it's why everybody's stronger. And I think also more people do the sport in the world. It's like that. You finally find some specimen, you know, yeah. genetically gifted guy and athletic talented guy too, you know, because in the past you have a lot of strong guys making in the world's strongest men, but they are not all very athletic. You understand? But now with the weight we put, it's not possible. Yeah. It's too heavy and you need to, you need to be gifted, you know. Everybody in that top 10 is... Uh, genetically gifted, they have uh, good uh, athletic skills because without that, you have no chance. Yeah, I, and I think that's that's probably one of the most exciting concepts with the fact that we're now really at the dawn of growth for Strongman. How many more Pudnovskis uh, are, are hiding out there under some stones? You know what I mean? That, that, that has never touched a Strongman implement in their life, never even stepped foot in, in a gym. But we're just waiting because sooner or later, there, there, there are there are just going to be freaks popping out left, right, and center. They could just do incredible things. You know, I think we are really starting to see see the dawn of that there. But going back, I think it's really important to highlight. You know, when you are in the industry of strongman, you know, there's a high risk to high reward if you're not getting paid a lot it really does flush a lot of weak hands off of the table in terms of the people that are not passionate about it, the people that, are, that were there just for the monetary gains, not because of their own like personal growth or trying to win titles or whatever. They, they get 
pushed out very, very quickly because obviously there isn't that reward there to kind of keep them hungry and keep them sucked in. But for you guys now who have, you know, grown that passion and shown the world that like, hey, even if I'm getting paid two, two grand to come first place, I'm going to show up, I'm going to give blood, sweat and tears, and I'm going to get onto that podium. And it's, if it kills me, it kills me. And those are the people that have been rewarded. And I absolutely love that about Strongman, that the people that spent the time in the trenches, that really, really worked hard, especially in those early years where you didn't get those rewards, now actually, because they have that experience under their belt, they're able, you know, the likes of yourself, like Jerry Pritchard, like, like some of these guys that really have been in the game for a while, and now finally getting their comeuppance and they're finally getting to see, you know, some of the, the nicer rewards at the back end of it. Cause I, you know, it's hard, man. I mean, you can talk yeah, about train, training, conditioning, everything. It, it, it kills you. I know. I know it's very hard and it's, uh, it's nice to see how it's working now. And, you know, everybody, like you said, doing for passion first, you know, because it, and it's the same also for the, the millionaire athlete in other sports. They start because they have a passion about the sport. You know, a hockey player loves to play hockey. A baseball player loves to play baseball. He has no money, he will play anyway, you know. But it's funny to have the rewards and the congratulations in terms of, of money when you reach like the top 10, the top 20 in the world. Uh, but in the past, you, you, you finish top 10 and you have almost nothing, you know. It's like, it's a little bit hard and many guys, <laughs> you know, you don't start the sport for the money. Okay. That, that's, Some that's people do. But I, saw, but I saw many guys stop because they don't have money. I remember 2008, an incredible Norwegian athlete, Ariel Logan, made the final for the first time in, uh, in 2008 in World's Strongest Men. And I really, I think this, that year finished seven or eight place, I think eight, and win like $3,000 or $4,000. And after, he stopped the sport because in his mind, it's not possible. He, he reached something very big for him. He don't have the rewards for, for that. And, it, and unfortunately, he stopped the strongman. But he was one of the top athletes. He was very young, a great, great potential. And it stopped. And I see many guys over the years quit the sport, not because they don't have any passion, just because they have to work, they have to do other things just for living. You understand? And I think many talent are lost because the sport was not enough big in the past. But now uh, it's nice to see new athletes coming, young guys reaching enough sponsor money. And also with the social media now, the, a lot of guys make money too, then it's easier to, to build your own business. You understand? Yeah, everyone's and like their own entrepreneur, aren't they? Yes, and just put your, your effort on the training. But uh, I, so, I, I always say, don't to put, never stop to put the effort on the training. Eh? If you put too much on YouTube, sometimes uh, they're working a little bit less in competition, then you must, when you compete, you must be on track all time and you have to prepare also with that minding. I think sometimes many guys are like uh, not focused. They talk, they think about the Instagram and the YouTube channel, uh, but the more important it's the result, you know, of the competition. And I know YouTube give you maybe sometimes money and stuff like that but uh, the history will just remember the result yeah yeah it's so true man it's so true uh, and i'm i'm really glad that you brought that up because it's something that that i have kind of noticed over the years and you know you you look at everyone now and it is it's the trend isn't it you know eddie really kind of kicked off the whole youtube thing thor then became huge in it martins after he took the title became huge in it you know, uh, Kaliskowski has got, got a channel going. Novikov's got a channel going. Shaw's got a channel going. And it's, it's a case of that these guys are putting a lot of time and they're working hard on this because they understand that, you know, sp the sporting career won't last forever and that realistically there needs to be some kind of backup. And I understand and I appreciate and respect that. But like you say, you do notice it. 
that they'll they'll be training, they'll be training, they'll be training, and you're kind of like, okay, like they're looking kind of good, they're looking all right, and then they get in competition and they just get dicked on, and you're like, oh, oh, okay, well, that's surprising, and that's happened quite a few times in the recent years, and I think you know, is it a case of the people are wanting to jump into strongman to get exposure to maybe win a title and then just get out and use that fame to kind of bootleg the rest of their career which is again like now we're actually seeing money in the events this is a possibility so it brings in that whole other thing of okay now are we gonna get the freaks come in that just want the paycheck they just want the bill they just want the fame and then they want to check out because it's like for, for fans of Strongman and for people like yourself, you know, we want, we want those freaks of nature to stay in and around and be passionate about it because what happens? Well, it only grows the sport. Well, what happens when the sport grows? Everyone gets paid more. Everyone, there's, there are better competitions. There are better packages. There's better support. So even when you've got guys like Pudnovsky or Thor or Eddie that are dominating years on years, no one's there being like, oh, fuck that guy. It's like, no, we want them to be around because... We, we want those headline titles. We want people to discover it because that is how growth happens. This is what we need for the sport to get bigger. So, so I think it's really important to, to kind of touch on that. Yeah. And I hope also if the pandemic uh, finished one day, the arena show uh, can coming back also in England. It was, uh, in my opinion, uh, it was really, really, really good competition really good show. I, I go one time in Manchester, it was a really good experience, but I don't think it will be possible uh, yeah, for a while. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope it will come back soon. Yeah, yeah, oh, man, me too. The, the, the arena shows, if anyone is in the UK and hasn't had a chance to go to, to an arena show yet, you really, really are messing out because the, the fan base we have in the UK is absolutely spectacular and they are the the crowd is just mad you know the the cheering the chanting everything it's it's like being at a football match but but, but watching these guys uh, live I crossed different my finger to compete this year yeah in England. oh yeah because they have planned mini cross. shows they planned mini shows in arena but still yeah. we don't know it's all sort of up in the air well i'm uh, i'm excited to 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 ask you Going back through, I mean, you know, we talk about the fact that you're competing 20 times a year. You've been to God knows how many international events now. Is there one competition, whether it's even in the grassroots phase, whether it's in the international phase, what has been your favorite competition today? Whether it be like the performance or just the experience you've had, the way you've been taken care of, what competition really stands out in your mind if someone's to ask you, you know, what is your favorite or best competition over the years? What do you automatically kind of go back to? What do you think of? Okay, but for, about the performance, I think the Shot Classic was my best. Best performance ever about the weight I lift and all the stuff. About uh, an amazing event, what I like, uh, I think the Iceman in Finland, I think 2012 or 13 in Kusamo was one of the best events I participated. It was outside, uh, minus 25. Wasn't it snowing? Was it snowing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Snow. And we have many events, few in the day and two in the evening. It was really cold, minus 30 when the sun goes <laughs> down. And I remember we have uh, like uh, the event was the Conan Wheel. But to have a good run on Conan Will, you, you have to put t-shirt. And everybody's waiting inside in t-shirt, thinking Conan Wills and turn. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. And it was an amazing event, like the ice block to lift and a, a lot of things. But this uh, winter event was the best for me. And I always good perform in that, uh, that situation too. Uh, but you know, I do many contests. I think now I have 103 international contests do in my Jesus. career. Jesus. But uh, those those winter events, the the Iceman and the World Strongest Viking in Norway, for me uh, was the the best event to do in snow. It was very very special, and many events 
was not regular even. Yeah. Uh, you don't, can train for this. You just arrive, okay, today we do that. You remember when Thor made the world record with the big tree? Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. You cannot train that at home. You understand? Yeah. Then everybody do it in competition for the first time. Like the mystery event in Bahrain, I I find it very interesting because nobody can train. Everybody on the same level. Then you have to to do this event like like uh, you like you want, like you think it's the best mean to do, but nobody knows. And then uh, improvisation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's that, that's really, really interesting. And, and I want to get your opinion. So if, if you had the option, okay, moving forward, all strongman competitions moving forward can change if you want them to. You can either keep the ability to know what the events are going into it and the weight, or everyone, everyone doesn't know what's going in to the event. Okay. No one. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting concept, man. Like, and yeah. even necessarily like opening ceremony, just loads of events in like a tumbler and just pulling it out random. Okay, right, we're, uh, we're gonna be hitting this event, we're gonna be hitting these weights. Like. No, but anyway, at the end, it will be not a big difference because, okay, if you, we talk now for the competition for the, the best four men in the world, everybody's prepared for all situation anyway, normally. Then the, the same guy will win at the end, in my opinion, if you don't know the events. And in Canada, we do a lot of competition in the, the professional circuit. And sometimes the event was just released the week before. And nobody is, is complaining about that, you know. Because anyway, anybody do all events and training all the time. But uh, I, I run also uh, many shows in Canada and for the amateur level is horrible. They want I, to I, was about, all, I was about to say one, that, yeah. <laughs> one year in advance, you know, and a lot of stupid questions about, you know, you have a truck pool, they, they want to know the color of the truck, you know, it's very <laughs> stupid. What year uh, was the truck made? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you understand it's changed nothing for, for the <laughs> athletes. But it's very interesting because uh, now you see the level of experience of each guy. Many guys maybe are more nervous about don't know nothing because I see many guys nervous about Bahrain because nobody knows the the, well, the athletes speculating the backstage even. as to what it could be. But for me, what I say to the organizer, I I just hope the mystery event is a new event, something we never do. Yeah. Okay. Because if the mystery event is a farmer's walk, it's changed nothing. You know, everybody practice this event anyway. But uh, see something new in the sport coming, and I speak also for the future contest, it's very interesting. It's always very interesting to see how the athletes can adapt to a new situation. It's also a good skill for me. You need to have the skills, the adaptation. <laughs> yeah, and I think, you know, it, it also kind of goes back to rewarding those folks who have done many shows because if you've done many shows like i i mean i've only i've been competing for two years i did six shows and you know in that time i experienced everything that you're talking about there like man the facebook groups for the body power expo at the nec in birmingham was an absolute joke like people asking the most ridiculous questions about implements that like size spec weight of the implement how many plates are going to be loaded is it going to be four ten plates is it going to be two twenty plates it's like what just pick up the fucking thing and run like do you know what i mean it's so 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 funny but it's it's really overthinking really yeah uh, yeah too much overthinking you know when strong men uh, when the whistle goes stop thinking just do it <laughs> yeah just going yeah. but uh anyway you you are nervous if you just you are not good prepared if you train properly strong men, you have to practice all events. That's it. Then doesn't matter what even happened. Okay, you have some strength, you have some weaknesses. It's normal for each athlete. Sometimes the events will be fit you up very good. Sometimes it's, it's less good for you. But, uh, you know, it's the competition. You, you can nothing do for... For, for, for that, but you have just to believe in yourself and give your 100% and it will change nothing at the end. Still last year in World's Strongest Man, when they, have, they, uh, they bring the, the, the dumbbell even, everybody thinks it's just normal dumbbell. Oh, 
It is double dumbbell. You know, no, nobody tried it before, but nobody complaining about it. Okay, we have to do that. We will do. Then you have one time to try before going, and that's it. And everybody is the same situation. Everyone has that oh shit moment of oh wow, trying to get two dumbbells to the shoulders is way freaking harder than it is taking uh, one to the shoulder. <laughs> it, 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 it's uh, it's different, but it's always good this seeing something new arrive in the sport because if it's all the time the same events, maybe it's a little bit boring for the for the fans to watch. And it's uh, really good to see new thing. And it's good also a big sponsor like Rogue Fitness bringing new events and new equipment to the sport. Uh, yeah, I mean, looking at like the Wheel of Pain, the, the, na the natural stone really running stuff. It oh. has improved the show a lot. Then uh, I think it's just positive side uh, of the competition when they, they happen. Because sometimes some organizer have all the time the same events because if you want new equipment you have to build it you you have to invest money but with that yes. big sponsor it they change the sport completely in my opinion you have a lot of new thing and a lot of good setup really good looking the competition look more professional you know it's a better show then uh, it's why maybe the strongman's going live live to TV and stuff like that because the setup is much more better than the past. Yeah, yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head there perfectly. You know, when we see, well, when we saw the injection from Rogue, you know, I think for a lot of people, when they first saw that Rogue was coming on board and being a major sponsor of Strongman, I think everyone was a little bit nervous that we were going to have that CrossFit-esque influence kind of involuntarily put into Strongman. Um, but after, you know, the first couple of Arnold's, I think, you know, Rogue have just gone so far above and beyond to, you know, the hours and money put in to create that Wheel of Pain. And like you said, because it was such a spectacle and they made it out to be such a big thing, it drew so much attention. It drew so many fresh eyes that we had this crazy, crazy implement that was inspired by Conan the Barbarian that everyone knew and they loved the films and the association with Arnie and everything. Do you know what I mean? It just worked and coexisted so perfectly that it got so many more people interested in the sport that it's like, okay, even if we spent X amount of money investing in it, we've brought so many more people into the live streams, into buying equipment and getting interested in this new sport. But I, I think I, I completely agree with you. A lot of a lot of people haven't done that. And, you know, we, we talk about the same events showing up. It's like, usually people will be able to tell with some of the bigger events, uh, not, not naming any in particular, but they'll normally be able to tell you what the final events are, what the five events will more than likely be, and we'll pretty much be able to hit it on the head 90% of the time. So like you said, having that injection of new ideas and new implements, it makes it so exciting. Yeah, no, it's very, very great. And you have more, more real fan of the sport, you know. Uh, last year, in Shot Last Week, the concept of Brian was really good idea. Okay, we are, we are in the gym to compete because we cannot go in inside place, you know, uh, maybe with the police uh, don't want to do it in Colorado. But we, we can do it with Brian. It was hard to organize in the pandemic situation too. You know, but the answer on the live stream, they, they sell, I think, $8, was really, really awesome. We, we don't think like it will be a, a good answer like that because uh, we doubled the price money just with that. And $8, what is this? Like Netflix is, is more expensive than that. If you are, you are a real fan, it's nothing to pay $8. To watch a, a competition uh, yeah. with that level of athlete or is the top ten in, oh, in the yeah. world. You, know, you you can watch there, and he helped a lot the, the athletes too to to reach bigger prize money. Then at the end of the day, I win more money with my second place in shot classic than in the world's longest man. You know, it was uh, <laughs> it was really awesome. And this year, the event will be bigger again. You know, it's like this: you build something solid in the future and every fan of the sport wait each of that contest major contest and rogue put the rogue invitational in october too uh, with the biggest prize money we ever seen in strongman sports and everybody is waiting for that and 
I think thousands and thousands of people will watch this event. Uh, it's very nice to, to, to see that. We have may maybe less contests to do in the year, but all Bigger contests. very big show. Very big show and everybody has the time to rest and prepare for, for the event. You know, yeah. it's not, we have time between. It's, but we get uh, to see the full potential, do you know what I mean? Like, I think uh, we get to see a better quality of show rather than all of these athletes putting their bodies through the grinder. And like you said, you know, you're doing 20 shows uh, a, a, a year. Uh, I know Alexi Novikov was doing like over 40 shows. Like it just, it's just absolutely insane to think about how much you're destroying your body. Uh, it's crazy. It's crazy, crazy but if you do a show in your own country, okay, it's competition. You have some risk. But uh, I think Alexi and like me in Canada, I don't have to push 100%. Yeah. And I because you're not being tested. It's like, like a train. It's like a training, okay, a yeah. little bit. But still, you have to compete, and sometimes uh, you have some young guy pushing you a lot. Then you have to give your maximum power, but with less contest. Because in the past, you don't have the choice. You have to do all Arnold if you want to qualify. Yeah, you know it's crazy. It, it, you we don't do this uh, contest just for fun. We have to do if you want. To <laughs> That's <laughs> why everybody competes so much, and all our nerves are very far. Australia, yeah. South Africa, Brazil, Europe, you know, you go everywhere. It's just strong men just, just checking in their punch cards for the day, isn't it? It's just like, oh, yeah. we're at another Arnold. Shh, shh, time to start work. <laughs> Total crazy. You know, I, I, I think I did uh, close to 2 million kilometers since the start of my career in plane. <laughs> It's just uh, just crazy to think yeah, about that, but it's many, many hours in plane. And I will say that I just came, came back from Bahrain and the travel was much more harder than the contest. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to nap, just getting into that chair, just yeah. filling up. The, the, good, the good thing presently, you have nothing, nobody in, in plane. Then you have sometimes four seats just for you. <laughs> it's, the, it's, it's the good point in the situation, but uh, you know the traveling is is very very hard. Uh, but I think everybody's pumped up with the events coming. You know we have short classic end of August, uh, world strongest man in June, uh, the world's most strong man in Las Vegas in September, and the Rogue Invitational. You know for me it's enough for 2021. is very very big show. And it will be really interesting for the fan to to watch this. Uh, you know, you have big weight in shot. You have already the events for one show. It's the shot classic, and it's heavy. It's very heavy show. It will be very interesting to see that. And this year is eight events. Yeah, it's I, I, what I really enjoy about it is is the fact that I think. You know, you don't have to be a mind reader to understand that there are quite a few major flaws with each of the varying different, uh, you know, corporate structures that own the big, big strongman events. And seeing something like the Shaw Classic really excites me because when you have a, a guy like Brian Shaw, he understands the ins and outs of competing like the back of his hand. And what he has done is he's taken all of the, the the not quite so perfect bits from all of the other shows and he's really cleaned them up you know he's given athletes plenty of notice what the events are going to be what the weights are going to be because he knows himself that it's a pain in the ass when it gets checked when you turn up to an event and then they say okay well this event that you've been training for you know we're not going to be doing it anymore yes you get on with it but it's not ideal and it's professionalism and i think that's one thing that that was really really highlighted to me is that we're now seeing a new age of strongman competition that is designed by the strongman for the strongman, not by a TV company for what they think the people want to see. So then what happens is people that fucking love strongman go and watch it. And then, like you said, they make crazy, crazy money. So moving on from there, is there going to be a chance that we're going to get the Grand Classic at some point? Because, man, that would be very exciting. You know, you've got all this history of, of running all these competitions. You've got a huge foundation in Canada. It could yeah. get on to, to, to national TV, you know, very, very quickly. Is this a possibility for the future, man? Because, uh, hey, I'd, I'd definitely pay more than eight bucks for that, man. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the plan is not to bring a Caron Classic. The, the, the plan is bring back Fortissimus. Oh. 
please, yeah. That that would I think that would change the game. Situation. We 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 cannot do that, you know. Uh, but for 2022, we will work on that full time. The the plan is bring it. I, and I also need to wait to see the date of the major show to for have a good date. I want the, the guy prepare to to do this show. But for sure, Fortissimus will be like in the past a decathlon, ten events, and because you know, Fortissimus crown the strongest man on earth. And I think with 10 events, you cannot give the advantage to someone, you know, the, the most complete and the strongest guy will win, will win the Louis Sayre statue, you know, 18 pounds bronze statue from, from Canada, is an epic trophy. Just two guys I have now, Zidronas and Derek Poundstone. And I think all the, the best athletes in the world want to compete in that competition for the, for the title. And uh, we, we, we try to bring back, because the plan was 2020, yeah. but we have stopped. Uh, we have already like uh, some money from government for that. You know, all was fixed for September 2020, but we need to cancel that because what you know, you know. But uh, we will bring back in Canada, I guarantee you, my friend. <laughs> oh man, I'm so, so excited. I remember when I first, first started this channel, a couple of years back now, I had Craig Tolley from uh, Strongman Motivation on Instagram on here. And we, and we were discussing Fort, uh, Fortismus and his favorite lifts of all time, which came from that show. And, you know, we kind of, we both sat there and said, you know, how incredible would it be if, if we could finally get this event back with, with the names that we have now, just how big of a show could we really make it? And, you know, fast forward, you know, a year, two years later, and it's like, Oh my God, we're finally going to get this. It's so, so, so cool. So for yourself, what, what, what are you most excited to see from that show? What is the one thing where you're like, okay, I'm pumped for the this. The first thing I want to participate because in 2008 and nine, I was helper. <laughs> and I saw the show, but I never had the chance to compete in that level. But 2008 and 9, I was not strong enough, you know. To so will fight. it be done invitationally or will it be done through qualifications? Oh, uh, you know, it, it will be an invitation show for sure because, you know, we don't build any tournament now. Nobody can compete, you know. Yeah. We have big international show, but uh, I find it sad a little bit for the middle, lowest level athlete who want to prove themselves and fight because they don't have contests. Yeah. At the moment, we, it's hard to organize because all festivals are canceled every, everywhere in the world where we do the competition. Then it's hard to, to those athletes to, to perform. But yeah. uh, it will be an invitation for sure. You know, we want to have a top 10 or top 12 guys in the world. But if we invite the people for 2022, it will be... Yeah, you have to look World Strongest Man and the, the big major show. Who uh, must to have a, play, a place, sorry, uh, in this lineup, but it's always the same guy anyway. Yeah. You don't need really a qualification problem. I just hope Kielkowski, Lichis coming back to sport soon. Uh, and all, all other athletes, you know, uh, they are active since last year. Uh, it will be easy to, to find the lineup. I know a lot of old athletes like me, like Brian. Brian was uh, in, in Fortis University. He, he made the podium, but still he don't have the trophy. And I, I know uh, he interests him a lot, you know, but uh, it will be really awesome. And the most interesting for me in Fortis Amus, it will, will, uh, will have a, a real backlift, not like in 2008, it was hip and thigh lift, like a half squat. Yeah. On leg. But now, in we have a machine, it's total parallel, it's a real back lift. You mm -hmm. have adjustment for arms, adjustment for, for each athlete, and you have to lift with the back. In the, in the exact Louis Sear position in the past, I tried this machine, and it's uh, brutal. <laughs> Damn, man, that's yeah, so I, cool to hear. I think uh, I think the best guy, like uh, maybe like a, a big guy like Brian, 
or someone really powerful statically, you know, Eddie Hall or a, a savvy cast in top shape, you know, can be amazing to watch, you know. But we have a lot of powerful guys now. It will be interesting to see. I think the winner must lift 3,000, I think. Because I lift 2,500. <laughs> okay. Uh, it was just a demo. Then I think I can do a little bit more. But I think 3,000 pounds is possi possible. Imagine how it's amazing to watch and how the crowd will be on that event. It will be very... Oh, my epic. God. Yeah. That, just that will go viral. Yeah. I just disappoint about one thing. We never find the famous Lucia Stone than Derek Poundstone lift. We never refine it. We post many, many stuff on the social media, still in the newspaper to find that stone. I'm sure someone have that stone at It's home. out there somewhere. Because it is wrote on that. Derek Poundstone lift that stone, you know, each day, 2008. Yeah. And the weight was 537, I think, the, that stone, but we still don't find it then it will be maybe a different stone. We don't have the, the choice, but I think many athletes want to try that famous stone. It was an impossible lift. Yeah. You know, but he did it. Didn't you perform the, the, that lift on a, a replica a couple of years back? Yes, I did for a TV show, a replica yeah. of 517 pounds. Because the real Louis C. Stones weight, 517 then for the tv they they take someone who cut the stones and i i lift until my chest that stone of 517 pounds but it's not the same than direct lift back in 2008 you know savvy cats don't try the stone he said no it's not possible to lift and direct lift and won the show it was one of the best moments of yeah. strongman history you know yeah. And I was just beside him when he lifted up. It was uh, amazing, the, the noise in the, in the tent at that moment. But it was uh, one of the best shows I've seen in my life. But I want to participate at least one time. It's why I want to put uh, on deck for 2022. I think uh, we need a lot of help about, uh, from the government. I just hope the pandemic will not uh, put some uh, problem about that show yeah. i just want to to run it and invite the guys to perform in in that amazing uh, competition but uh, for sure i think uh, the 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 guys from the the past like not few not a lot of athletes on that time compete again you no. know at brian shaw was there terry Hollins, mark felix yeah and i think all the other guys are retired at the moment but uh, it will be interesting to see a, a fortissimus number three. <laughs> oh, man, oh, yeah, honestly, that, that does sound exciting. And I think, you know, if you carry on the way that you are, you know, looking at the progress that, that you've been able to make over the last kind of year or so with all of this extra time that you've got, that I think with, with the time you now have ahead of you go, going into that, man, if, if you do get the opportunity to compete, and I really bloody hope that you do, I, th I think I think you're going to do some serious damage. There, there are some events in there that that you're going to be uh, you're going to be absolutely smashing. So, man, yeah, I think, just I think. like you said, let's just hope that COVID doesn't get in the way, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the the only pen pass because I think the best situation is make for this almost like an arena show. Yeah, because in any way, if you do in Quebec, it will be full for yeah. sure. It's always full for strongmen, but uh, now the situation must to improve. You know, to, uh, to come came back in normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, it's uh, just the thought of it, the the thought of it, the atmosphere, and like you said, if we could get that into some kind of arena show, and again, being able to televise it and live stream it, man, I just think it would be, it would be a spectacle. It would be something that people would remember. You know, and I think that that's what we're looking for in the sport, isn't it? Like we said, you know, we we want more and more people to go, oh wow, oh geez. This is this is quite something, and I think for Fortismus really has the opportunity yeah. to do and, that. And I just hope the because you have top two athletes like Litchis and Kilkowski not competing, 
since uh, 2020 because they are injured. Yeah. I just hope they will recover and can compete in a real, real, you know, because the strongest man on earth will be crowned in, in that show. And I want everybody, you know. Yeah, you don't want there to be any ifs or buts, do you? Like, even if just one big name's out, then everyone goes, oh, but, oh, but what the... if Martins was competing? Where would he go? And it's like, no, we don't want any speculation. We want everyone there. We want to clear this up. That's yes. it. Like, who is the strongest? Hands down. No ifs, no buts. Let's <laughs> figure it out. Ten events, last man standing wins. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, that's the plan. <laughs> exciting times, exciting times. Now, I love to end the uh, the podcast the same way with everyone, Jeff. So I'm excited to, to kind of hear what you say here. I want you to imagine for a second that you are stepping into a time machine. When you do so, you get taken back in time to when you are around about 11, 10 years of age. You know, very formative years of your life. You've got everything to experience ahead of you and form you into the person that you are today. In those few moments, you get to impart a bit of wisdom, knowledge, a mantra, maybe a way to live your life, some advice to help your younger self get through everything that you know you're going to have to get through to get to where you sit here today as a successful man that you are. In those few moments, what do you say to your younger self? Well, first thing I, I would say to him, work hard is important. You know, I work all, all, all my life, you know, uh, I work on a on a farm when I was young yeah. with my father, my grandfather, and they all the time see me. You have to work hard, all the time, and I reproduce that in the sport, and it's working really well for me. But sometimes it's not always funny to work hard when you are young teenager, you know. But yeah. uh, I want to explain that for him. Uh, the, the first thing, and also you know, never give up. Be patient, and maybe your chance will come one day. And I think it's what I do, and it was not a, a, a bad choice. But uh, the most important is find a passion in life and do it 100%. You know, it's the more, and you will be happy if you do that. You know, it's not so important what kind of job you choose to do, but just be passionate about something. Uh, and do it a hundred percent and work hard on that you know you put your focus on that one thing don't try to do 10 different job and searching you all the time just be passionate about something if it's about music do music you know uh, this is just an example but do it with your art and put hundred percent of your effort on that uh, you will succeed for sure yeah i think i think that is yeah Beautiful. Absolutely ace. I completely agree with that. Completely agree with that. You know, I think that's when you, you feel most content, isn't it? When you have given, when you know that you've given your everything to something that you're incredibly passionate about. And I think, you know, success is kind of bred in that area is that if you do, because you're passionate about something, it doesn't seem like really, really hard work because you're getting that enjoyment out of it. And that yeah. just snowballs. And I think you're, you're right. You know, if you can keep on feeding that and nursing that, it, you know it can turn into something quite amazing but man thank you so 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 much it has been an absolute pleasure to have you on board i for one am so freaking excited for the rest of the year i'm so excited to see what you can do i'm so excited to finally see that first place trophy in your hands man this is it we're on the podium now we just keep on going up and up and up and up and up jf's time is here oh man it's, it's gonna be exciting I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for you big time I will work hard for that. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> I believe every, every second, man. I believe every second. Thank you so much. And 100% we'll have to get you back on the show at some other point, man. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you today. Good. Thanks, man.